Are you? The Indian woman behind the counter asked me. I was at Dunkin' Donuts grabbing coffee, and after handing me my change, the Indian woman wanted to know where I was from. This often happens to me. I could be at a restaurant, an adult video store, or a funeral. <laughs> and inevitably, someone will ask, what are you? They ask in a way as if I looked like the elephant man. And then I realize that their question is one about my cultural identity. Although I'm Latino, much of my cultural heritage and history is Mexican. However, I often get mistaken for someone from the Middle East or India. The employee at, Dunkin at the Dunkin' Donuts made the same mistake. She enthusiastically asked me where I was from, and I guess she was expecting me to answer with India. But when I said Texas, she just sighed and said, here's your coffee. <laughs> the subtext shrieking, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this same thing happened in Denver at a festival. Jen was buying an umbrella for her niece, and while the foreign man handed her change, he looked at me, smiled, and then asked, where are you from? When I responded with Texas, his smile turned into a frown, and he wished us a good rest of the day. At first, I thought people just had something against Texas, but when the same thing started happening with Latino people, I realized it was a cultural thing. People see me and think, he's one of us, and then I disappoint them. Whenever I go into a bodega, everyone tries to speak Spanish with me, and when I look at them glassy-eyed, I explain in my broken Spanish that I am not fluent. Well, what are you then, they ask. And when I tell them I'm Latino, they really lose it. Well, you should learn, they shout as they hand me my change. Although they're right, I wish I could explain to them that I've been trying to learn Spanish all of my life. In terms of formal Spanish lessons, my earliest took place senior year in high school. My teacher was Mr. Gandar, a man who, in, who in addition to his teaching duties, was also the cheerleading coach and a part-time mortician. <laughs> Mr. Gandar would give us weekly tests. I was a pretty lousy student. We took a test once where we had to translate Spanish words to English. I had no idea what I was doing. One of the words was igualmente. I thought about it for a moment and wrote the first word that came to my mind. Igloo. Afterwards, we were instructed to hand our test to another student for grading. We went word by word as the correct answers were revealed. When we got to the word igualmente, Mr. Gandad informed us that the correct English translation is likewise. Frank raised his hand and asked, what if someone put igloo? <laughs> and Mr. Gandad responded as if Frank had offered him a hand job. <laughs> what? Who put that? <laughs> Everyone looked at one another. And then sheepishly, I raised my hand. Stand up, Mr. Gandad told me. I stood up and then he asked, what were you thinking? Before I could answer, he abruptly said, actually, stand up on top of your desk, now. <laughs> Although it was a strange request, I didn't think twice about it. Now, tell us all, just what was going through your mind when you wrote Igloo? <laughs> I tried my best to sound regretful. Well, I guess I wasn't thinking and next time I'll study harder. Mr. Gandad then said he was going to give me extra credit for being creative and allowed me to climb down my desk. While I didn't retain much of the formal Spanish I learned, I remember a little about formal introductions. For example, el gusto es mío, or the pleasure is mine, is said after you've introduced yourself to someone. I often wonder if there are overzealous people whoever insists that the gusto is theirs alone. <laughs> I imagine my ancestors meeting, and after introductions, both insist that the pleasure is solely their own. No, 
el gusto es mío. <laughs> they argue back and forth and end up clubbing one another to death. <laughs> The other Spanish lessons in my life have come through informal sources. I grew up in San Antonio. Like Tex-Mex cuisine, Spanish in San Antonio is a puree of both English and Spanish. It's a no-holds-barred way of speaking, with no regard to rules or syntax. <laughs> my father often makes up his own words, while my mother says things like, Me voy a la store to buy leche y chones. <laughs> If Strunk and White ever visited San Antonio, I'm sure they would have had an aneurysm. <laughs> Besides my family, my other source of Spanish was through music. When I was 10 or 11, I bought a cassette tape by Johnny Z. The tape only had one song. It was called No Señor. The song is about a man who gets dissed by his girlfriend, so he decides to go south of the border to chase women. The chorus of the song is Johnny Z repeatedly singing, Just give me that lovin' baby. The song is mostly in English, but is peppered with Spanish words. The first week I got the tape, I walked around my house listening to it on repeat with my Walkman. I was singing out loud without discretion or inhibition. At one point in the song, Johnny Z sings the following lyrics, Se me paró, baby. Se me paró. <laughs> My mother overheard me sing this part of the song and came over and smacked me across the head. Don't sing that, she yelled. Later, I would learn that what I was singing translates simply to, I have an erection. <laughs> My mother and my erection are words that should never be used in the same sentence. I'd been singing this lyric all week. I can only imagine how bizarre this situation looked like to an outsider. A 10-year-old walking around his home, proudly boasting that he has an erection. The real heavyweight for me, though, in terms of music, was Selena, an American singer often referred to as the princess of Latin pop. Her songs are in both English and Spanish. Although she, although she could sing in Spanish, I've read that she could barely speak it and still struggled with the language after years of practice. Despite this, she isn't worshipped more than in Texas. You can't go too far without hearing one of her songs playing somewhere. One of the songs you might hear is Beedy Beedy Bum Bum. <laughs> the title doesn't exactly translate, but can be characterized as a beating heart. It's one of my favorite songs, and I think it's the perfect answer to the question of, what are you? And although I don't culturally identify as being fully American or fully Latino, in this in-between state of being, there is a beating heart. Thank you very much. Yeah.